Hello and welcome back. So you're joined by myself, Scott, and, and Maximilian, which is still alive <laughs> and awake. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do now is the next part. So we've completed your controls. We've completed your moving away and stopping. So you'll know how to operate the car. To yeah. a certain level now we're going to introduce junctions and turning left now if you're doing lessons and this is an excellent way to know that you're covering the subjects that you need to be covering by watching this video and following this course that you're doing the correct sort of timeline for your lessons it's, yeah. it's slightly off topic now but a lot of people come to me I've never covered this I've never done that I've only done this and I've done 40 hours of lessons oh. and it's kind of like well it doesn't seem to have progressed in the right sort of way you know the right. syllabus the okay. way that we're conducting this course yeah. so if you do watch this you'll know exactly what you need to know so that when you go to do your driving lessons you can actually say to the instructor hang on a second we haven't done this yeah and you can come prepared to the lesson with information in case you know, you need to mention something or focus on something for your lessons. So with the case that you just said, mm -hmm. where the individual's only done such and such and such over 40 like hours like of hours of driving. Of driving around the do block. Do you think <laughs> that's pretty much the driving instructor trying to get more money out of the clients? Or... Well, my attorney advises me to make no comment. Okay. I'll leave that to the <laughs> viewer's speculation, okay? Well, no, it's just, I just like to know because like, with the, the course that we're doing now, mm -hmm. you're giving a guideline for all the new drivers like myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just very fortunate to be participating in it and like learning from Scott. Mm -hmm. But like, it's just like this is a nice way to just give people guidance. Like, right, cool. This is what you should, your instructor should be doing. Mm. Like, follow these guidelines, and then that way you, you won't get done over by your driving instructor. I'm not saying all yeah. people do that, but I'm just saying just in case, always be prepared for the worst. Mm. Now that we've got the disclaimers out of the way. We're going to move on. So, you remember how to move the car, Max? I do indeed. Tell me. So, first of all, you've got to put um, depress the brake. Good, so tell it some bad jokes. So, <laughs> yeah. um, first, and then you'll press the right. Good. And go down to drive. Perfect. But keep the, your foot on the brake. Nice. So you can check your blind spots. Yes, very important. Once you're ready to go, indicate where you're going to be going. Then mm. do a secondary check. Mm. Make sure it's nice and safe. Mm move on perfect well done so i would suggest which is something that doesn't need to be done okay but i would suggest from my experience to always signal when moving away okay you can't really go wrong now the proper guidance for signaling is does it benefit anybody okay so as an example say it's three o'clock in the morning middle of winter everyone's in their house asleep and you're on the road driving around there's probably no one there that would benefit from your signal okay so you don't need to use it however for a driving test you're not three o'clock in the morning <laughs> it's not freezing cold hopefully unless you live in scotland yeah i know all about that <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there will be people around even people yeah. in parked cars pedestrians cyclists so if you always put a signal when you're moving off even if someone that you haven't seen does come along it's going to benefit them okay. and it's going to save you from failing your driving test okay because if we do not signal do not in capital letters when we need to signal because it will benefit somebody yeah you can fail your driving test and okay. that applies to moving over and stopping on the left. So we show a left signal to move over and stop okay. on the left. Yeah, yeah. So it's important to know why we signal, but also how you could possibly fail your driving test. Okay. For not using the signals when you really do. So would need that them. be like a minor? Uh... Depends on the examiner. It's called discretion. Okay. You know, um, but most likely major really mm. so a major fault is well, i guess you could cause a crash if you're, you're not signaling Correct. warning people yes what, what you're doing okay mm. makes sense so, so it's, it's fair enough like you can't really debate that it is what it is yes okay that's just the easy answer to that 
Yes, you're correct. So, um, we're going to be using the indicators a bit more as we move off and stop. Now, the main reason why we uh, were referring to the indicators, because Max said really nice strategy or routine for moving away. I just added to Max's routine by talking about the indicators and signals. Okay. So Max mentioned how he would move the car by holding the brake, putting the car into gear. We call this prepare. Okay. That's P for prepare. This is a routine that we'll teach as driving instructors to students. It's called POM. We just covered the P. The O is what Max said, which is the observations. That's from the least dangerous blind spot out the pedestrian side back window to the most dangerous blind spot which is out to the traffic side and where we're going to be moving out towards last this is the most dangerous side yeah so max mentioned all of this and then i would suggest indication beatboxing yes signal. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're off yeah <laughs> off, really off to drive or off to beatbox? <laughs> off to beatbox. <laughs> um, right, so there we go. So that's the POM routine. So prepare, observe, maneuver. And the maneuver can involve the signal. Yeah. Okay? okay? So that's what I'd like you to do next. And then we're going to see how Max copes with his first left turn. So what I'm going to advise is just when you reach the end of this road come to a stop so we've okay. done the moving away we've done the stopping we've now just read reference to the so routine would you like me to pull over and stop or just just at the end of the road just come, come to, to a stop yeah cool. that's why max is here you see that question i wouldn't have thought of that so yes we just, just need to stop it's just, it's just part of my character i like to question everything please continue so. to do that <laughs> right max unless you have any questions i would like you to drive on smashing so Mm, yeah, self commentary, really nice. Yeah. Put that down. So now we're in drive. Cover my observations. So I see, I think we're safe to go. So I'm going to indicate. And let's. Nice, double blind spot check there from Max, which is a very good habit to have. Oops. Well done. So you're acting on the information. So it was safe when you moved off. Yeah, no, and that's... then you had a few vehicles come along. So well done. Excellent. So you triple checked again before moving off. Very nice. Well done. Very smooth, nice position as well. So you're not getting scared by the white van, you're still maintaining your safe distance from the parked cars. So remember, we're just gonna to come to a stop at the end of the road. We will be turning left, however, don't focus on that, just focus on the stopping for now. Then I'm gonna give you the information about the left turn. So when these giveaway lines disappear and you can't see them out the front of the windscreen, mm -hmm. good time to stop. Well, I let this van go fast. Signal for me, he'll probably go around you anyways. Good, so nice left signal. Now, have a look at the main road traffic by looking right, left, right. These are the minimum observations. Right, yeah. right just like you're crossing the street. Good. And then if you know it's safe, because you'd walk out like crossing the street, mm -hmm. you can drive out. So when you're ready, Max. Excellent. And if you just pull up on the left here. So Max was asking earlier, how does he know how far away he is from the left? So once he's stopped, we'll cover that. Really nice, remember how to place the car into park? Yep, put the brake down and press the lucky button. Okay, so what and we're gonna do says... now, uh, is we're just gonna give Max some information about what he's covered. Um, and we're gonna work our way backwards. So from where we are now, you asked earlier a question about how do I know how far away from the left I yeah. am? And this is really important because you will be asked to pull over and stop on the left three times normally three times. Okay. on your driving test. So a lot of people think they've done something wrong. So when they're on yeah. the lessons or on a driving test and the examiner or the instructor says, I'd like you to pull over and to the left, immediately people are like, oh, oh no, I've done something the Anxiety wrong. goes through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the exam. Okay. The examiner wants to see that you can pull over safely and then move away safely. Okay. So to answer your question, how do you know how far away you are from the left? You see there's a toy on the windowsill here, Max. Yeah. 
Would you just reach forwards and try to take that toy from me? Right. Okay. This is a toy, everybody. Just okay, so we'll, we'll call that one Snowflake. Snowflake, all right. Just like Max. All right, so, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is if you just sort of imagine, or not imagine, but keep your head where it would be when you're driving, because right. if we move the head, then everything else outside the windscreen will move. Does that yeah. make sense? So yeah. if we keep our head stationary. Uh, what we're looking for now is the actual curb. Right. So the curb, for most people, this might be a bit of a strange word. So the curb is the very edge of the pavement. Where the pavement ends, it's marked by stone usually. Yeah. We call that a raised curb. Uh, and then the road begins. Now we're going to use that curb as a reference. So right. when you look out the window and you see the curb, it starts off somewhere from your windowsill ledge, yeah. doesn't it? Where that curb is on your windowsill ledge, put the toy. So like, uh, what is it? Yeah. Oh, I don't like this. So like, am I just looking for the, the straight edge of the curb, yeah? You are. So, so I'm like this. Mm hmm Right, so maybe a little bit more this way? Mm hmm That's what I was thinking, yeah. Well, yeah, everybody's that, that, different. You can yeah. see Max is quite tall. Yeah, no, so that, that, that seems about right to me, yeah. Yeah. Because it's almost coming in line. And obviously it's a little harder because like it's obviously all in different angles, so you've kind of got to do a bit of geometry here. That's where it gets really complicated because some roads aren't straight like this yeah. one that turned. This is a very good reference point. So now I'm going to open the door. We are in park, mm -hmm. yeah, so the car's secure. I'm going to check to see, obviously, that there's no cyclists or anybody else. You do have a responsibility when opening a door right pedestrian driver uh, sorry pedestrian passenger driver uh to check for traffic before opening the door that's our responsibility and a good tip is not what i'm doing now use the opposite hand because that kind of forces you to lean over doesn't it yes oh, that's very smart yes and when you put your seat belt on as well to avoid any twists in the seat belt use the opposite hand okay I've never even thought of it. Because if we do this, uh, can twist. That just gets annoying. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to get the point. So here we go. And that's your distance. Now, you are what's called a reasonable distance from the curb. Now, a good reference for a re reasonable distance is the steering wheel. Right. The steering wheel is about this wide and that's how far away you are from the curb that is a reasonable distance okay okay and that's what you are and you'll know now every time you come over and pull over to the left that the toy will it's come be in line and then it will be in line that's where you straighten your vehicle and stop when you need to and okay. then you'll always be the roughly the safe distance uh, the same distance from the left okay so see if i wanted to get close into the curb because mm -hmm. you say I'm at a reasonable distance mm -hmm. but I just adjust the toy to a little bit to the left so then whenever I'm turning in it will line it up ah. mm. Very smart mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay so there you go uh, now before that we got to the end of the road mm -hmm. and this is where we'll leave off so we got to the end of the road I didn't ask Max to do any routine like we did when we moved off so remember POM POM mm -hmm. that's the routine for moving away there is a routine for junctions, which right. we will cover, and that is called mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. As you can see, it's a bit more complicated. There's yes. a lot more to it. So we can simplify it, okay, which we might cover in a, in a further lesson, okay. but it's called MSPSL, and that's a routine for the end of junction. What I asked Max to do is just to come to the end of the road, then we were going to look at the road to see if it was safe and then turn. That's the very last bit, the L for look. Okay. Leading up to the end of the road, roughly five car lengths, 10 to five car lengths away. So roughly 20 meters, if you're good with measurements. Then you would start to check your mirrors. Always right. pair your mirrors, internal mirror, external mirror, and signal in the same direction. Okay. So we're doing a left. So internal mirror, 
left external mirror, finally we signal. Always check the mirrors first, signal second. So in our routine we've got mirrors, signal. They must be in order. Okay. If we do the signal first and the mirror second, you can get a minor fault on your driving test or depending on the examiner and the situation, it could it could be a major fault. It depends on the situation. So I must stress this, mirrors are always first for safety so that you can see if there's a cyclist there, right. you can see if there's a car there. Then you might not signal because you might think that vehicle is too close. If you signal, it might have to slow down a lot or brake or it might startle the driver. So the safer thing to do now that you've seen that vehicle, you let it pass. Yeah. And then you signal once it passes. A lot of people ask the question, why mirrors first? So that's just to answer that. Now position, if you're coming to the end of the road and you're turning left, what side of the road would you position on if you're turning left? So would you be coming in and like kind of leaning into the left? Correct. Because well that kind of that starts off your turn before yes. even turning. Yes. So it directs you into yes. your... Okay. Good. So that's your position. Okay. Uh, so mirrors, talked about. Yep. Signal, pretty simple. Position, done. Yep. Speed. What kind of speed do you think you would want when you're approaching a junction? Very fast, very slow. No, no, you want to, very slow. You want to gradually build it down. Brilliant. We talk as instructors. We talk about a running speed to a jogging speed to a walking speed. Okay. It does dis depend on the junction. Right. Some junctions are very wide, very good visibility. Maybe you can do them at jogging speed. Mm -hmm. Other junctions are very small and very poor on visibility. We call this a closed junction. Okay. You will need to stop at a closed junction. Okay, cool. So it just depends on, like we said earlier, acting on the information. You've got an open, nice junction, good visibility. Acting on that information, you might just keep going. Okay. Or you can't see anything and you now know you need to stop because okay. you can't see. So this junction's a little bit of both. You've got parked cars, which yeah. makes it a little bit obscure. Okay. So you might want to stop. So my question to you is like, so see if there's parked cars, like what we just experienced there. Mm-hmm. So obviously some people might just take the chance to just drive out. Like they'll stop, do the do the maneuvers, everything they have to, mm -hmm. but they kind of just get, would you slowly nudge out? And you like to get a better view? You have to. Oh, is it? Yes, this is called peep and creep. So <laughs> imagine you're walking out into the road. Okay. Yeah? Right. And you might be walking out between parked vehicles. Right. Would you just step out? Or would you maybe lean out? Yeah, you lean and have a little look. Left exactly right, the right. same. Yeah, we do okay. that in the car. Okay, cool. So your leaning is your creeping. Okay. So that means you're moving very slowly forwards, like a very slow walking speed. Mm -hmm. Maybe you might only move a foot or a couple of feet and then stop again. Yeah. And then when you stop, you do your peep. That yeah. means you look both ways, like you would do if you were crossing the road. Okay. Until the point where you feel that you can see enough of the road and make a safe decision now, you can keep going. Otherwise cool. you wait and you creep out a little bit more, yeah. peep a little bit more, until you can see if it's, it's exactly like crossing the road. Okay, cool. So, that's excellent that you bring that up. Thank you, Max. So, important routine. And we might be doing that at these junctions. Okay. okay? Cool. So lastly, so we talked about the position, we talked about the speed. We've actually just covered the last one, which was the looking. Yeah. And different junctions, different kind of way, peep and creep, or maybe you don't need to because you yeah. can see. That covers the routine, which I can't stress enough, and I'm sorry for such an in-depth coverage of this, because I know sometimes it can be a bit too much information, but this really is so necessary and so important to pass on your driving test. Cool. It's too many people fail at junctions because yeah. they approach them too quickly, or they don't look, they don't have effective observations, okay. which is the number one reason, like 10 years in a row, for people failing their driving really? tests. Really? Observations at junctions. Maybe they should start creeping more then. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, it's quite common, just to digress a little bit, anxiety. Some people yeah. on the driving test are very anxious. I know I was, yeah. Sweaty palms, feel sick, mm. maybe a little bit shaky. It changes the style of driving, so people can be a bit erratic. 
Okay. And they might not drive in the same way that they normally would. Yeah. So, it's just pressure, yeah, isn't it? It is. So I know driving too slow is the other extreme of this situation, but it can probably increase your passing your driving test rather than driving too fast and just even driving out into a road and not looking properly. Okay. That's incredibly dangerous. Okay, right. Now, Max, um, reference points for turning left. I don't think I need to say this because your left turns are very accurate. But what we'd be looking at, you know when we talked about looking out the front and yeah. we could see the curb? Yes. So imagine it was actually a corner or a junction. Okay. Obviously that curb would bend, wouldn't yeah. it? So you're driving towards the end of the road and you can still see all of this curb and corner out mm -hmm. of the windscreen. When you cannot, in capital letters, not see the curb or the corner out of your windscreen, that is the reference point for starting to turn. Oh, okay. Now, with experience and confidence, you won't even be looking for that. You're probably not even looking for that now. And oh, everybody's different. I'll start looking for it now that you've said it. All right. Well, <laughs> you know, you might just comfortably go around left yeah. turns without this in mind. It might be subconscious or something yeah. like that. But for people who would like a reference point, that's your reference point. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Any questions? Because we're actually just going to go and cruise around and do a I've few got left one turns. Question. Mm -hmm. Right. See our uh, windows are steaming up. How do we de-steam de them? So we're going to move into a show me question. Now you do need to know this. Yeah, and it seems important because it's blocking your, your observation yes, points. Yes, good. So that's what I'm thinking about automatically is that, right, these windows are all steamed up. It's going to block my my eyesight, my view, my vision and that. So th this is what I need to know. Like, this is what I want to ask. So, so I've got a question for you. Oh, no, that's never good. Can you fail your driving test? There are two questions on your driving test. One's okay. a tell me question, one's a show me question. Okay. And the demista is a show me question. So you do Ooh. need to know this. Okay. Okay. So it's good that this is coming up like the window wipers earlier. Yeah. We now talk about demisters. So can you fail your driving test for not answering your show me question? I'm going to have to say yes. Good. Totally correct. Why have you come to that conclusion? Well, they wouldn't be asking if it wasn't important. That's totally correct. Yes, it's very important. So if I just create a scenario now, imagine you're driving down, uh, let's just make it really extreme now. You're driving down a motorway at 70 okay. miles an hour and you can't see out your window. <laughs> <laughs> just started sweating all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can you see the importance? Yes. So if you don't know, you can't demonstrate to the examiner that you can demist your windows while driving. Okay. Well, hmm, it could be a very dangerous situation in the future. So that's yeah. how important it can be and why you would potentially fail your exam, okay. your driving test, for not answering the show me question. There's a big myth out there that you'll only get minor faults with the show me tell me questions if you don't answer them at all yeah. or don't answer them correctly but this is a big myth and it's very important people fail the driving test for not knowing the show me tell me questions this is something we're really going to cover at the end okay, okay? so we'll have a whole section there for the uh, video on show me tell me questions Cool. Um, and yes, excellent you're asking questions. So I'm going to show you how to demist. Okay. Which windows would you like to demist? Well, all of them. Obviously. I knew that was coming. <laughs> but like, yeah. I think the, the, prime, like, the most important one would be the back window because I can't yeah. actually see anything. Okay. Which is obviously important for maneuvering. And then obviously looking over your, doing your observations. Yeah. I would say this window here yeah. is more important because it's like the deepest blind spot. Yes. But I can still see kind of out of that, thankfully mm -hmm. for the light. Mm -hmm. But the most important one to me right now is the back window mm -hmm. and then the back right. Mm. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to do the back window first. Okay. While we're talking about that and it's demisting, uh, or we're not talking about that, we're talking about something else while it's demisting. So uh, I'm going to give you some nice tips here. Uh, tips you wouldn't get normally from, um, let's say, somebody else. Okay. See this button here? Yep, where it says rear. So what do you think that button's for? The back window. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah. Press it down for me. And there you go. That's how you demist your back window. Is that it? Yep. It will take a little while. Okay, so there's these strips on the back window. Do you see the lines? Yes. Basically, they heat up. 
that will heat the mist, heat the window. Are? Yes, it's like a radiator. You might even ah, see it starting to okay. work. You yeah, see yeah, that? yeah, 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 yeah. Now, regards to the side windows. So I had a student, actually had a license, uh, Mick, and very nice guy. Got to, he lived in Ireland, he got back to Ireland, and he was driving with his brother. He got to the end of the road. And he said, Scott, when I got to the end of the road, I was trying to edge out and the windows were so misty, I couldn't see. What do I do? There's a couple of things you can do. This is a good tip. So you see these vents here that we have on the side? Mm -hmm. yeah. See how they angle towards the window? Yeah. So when we turn on the air conditioning, which is this button here, mm -hmm. that blows air out of those vents. And because we've angled them towards the windows... It should demist them. Yes. So what I've done is I've just changed the air distribution or the direction of the air, so it is definitely coming out of those. Now, do we, uh, the other way actually, if, if this isn't too much, uh, notice what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Bring your window down. I put my window down, and then when I raise it back up, does it look any different? Yeah, it's, it's a lot more clear, but a it's a bit, bit streaky. Clear. Yeah. But so I mean, it, it's done a reasonable job. Yeah. Slightly better than what it was before. It gives you more of a, a better vision, like a view vision as well. So. so if you need it immediate because you're at the end of a road at a junction. So I, I, see, I could do that with all the, all the back windows in, right? And that's what I was going to lead into. So you can do that because there's no vents on the back windows. Yeah. Simple as that, people. Simple as that. Cool, we like to keep it simple, yeah. Right, now, um, when you're happy with the visibility, mm -hmm. we're going to go into doing your left turns. Okay. This is where I'm going to be reasonably quiet. Uh, please continue with your self-commentary. So just mentioning okay. what it is that you're doing as you're doing it, or any thoughts or questions that come up. Okay. Um, when you're ready, drive on. You might be here for a while because of that back window. <laughs> That's okay. So while we're, doing like the, while we're doing the back window, I'll, I'll just show you the front window. Okay. So there's two questions for your driving test. How to demist the rear window, mm -hmm. which is the rear button. And you see the one there that's actually got your name written on it. Yes. Yes, I do. So Max, <laughs> what button would you push to demist the front window? My special button named Max. Yeah, the Max button. Push it. Now, you probably notice it's going to get very loud. Okay. It says max, right? Max is very loud, so... No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so push it again for me. All right. That's it. It's smashing. That's actually pretty simple. It's hey. the easiest way. There's a more complicated way, which will be mentioned on the actual DVSA answer for the question, and it's the temperature, the air distribution or direction, and the fan speed. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of sitting here and boring you for probably another 10 minutes about how you do all that, why not just tell you to, to push the max button and it'll do it all for you? Yeah. Yeah? There's also an auto button here, you see that? Mm -hmm. So if you ever feel like the uh, climate in the car needs some conditioning, yeah, and you can't be asked to f fiddle about, fiddle about bam, <laughs> auto. That's very common on lots of cars, there'll be an auto button okay. for the air conditioning. Okay? Right. Yeah I, feel, yeah, I feel safe enough to go now. Nice. Right, let's Take see. your time. Any questions? Self-commentary? Drive on when you're ready. Right. Let's do this. So, foot on the brake. Down on that. So, we know where we are now on drive. So, this car's coming. Let's see where these cars are going first before I do my observations. Right, go. Cool. So, there's nothing coming from that side. Let's see, no cyclists or... Looks even good to go. So, oh no, it's a cyclist. Cyclist of motorbike cross coming up. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, there's a van car it's turning. Good. Now had the van kept going, I would have encouraged you to keep going. Because okay. you've already moved out into the road. Right. So stopping in the middle of the road is actually more dangerous than increasing your speed and moving out, increasing okay. the distance from the van. So he should technically be observed, I'm sorry, um, yes. observing me. Yes. And mm. maneuvering to... To the corner? Yep. Has it disappeared? Uh, it has now. Mm. Good time to steer. Uh, so yes, 
uh, you've placed your signal on, you've started to move off, you've made your decision, commit. Yeah, okay. And sometimes increasing your speed can actually be safer. So that might be a good situation. Really nice positioning in the road. Let this guy pass, well done, and we ignore them and just let them continue on their way. And we focus You're on You're going us. faster than 20, mate. Rules of the road. Yes. <laughs> So we can see that it's clearly written in the road, um, or we should have some signposts also telling us the speed limit. I don't see those at the moment, but we do have the road markings. Right, so we come up to our left hand turn here now. Yeah, would you turn left for me please, Max? Good, nice mirror. Remember to do your mirrors in plurals. Yep. Good, nice, get into left, good signal. Nice observations, good speeds, good look. Good to go. Yeah, we're going to turn left immediately here, so you're going to be doing a bit of a U-turn. Lovely. Nice gap there from the pavement, roughly a meter off, no danger of hitting the curb. Very nice. Good, to go. good control, well done. All right, just keep following the road ahead for me, please. What we're going to do a bit further down the road mm -hmm. is we're going to practice moving over to the left and stopping. Okay. Do you remember we've got your reference point set up? Yes, we do. So maybe we can integrate that into your pulling over to the left and stopping. So Max, I'd like you to find a convenient place to pull over on the left and stop, please. You've got a parking space here on the left, you see that? Lovely. Good mirrors, good signal. Slowly. Make more break. Lovely. Well done. Amazing. Fantastic job. Well done. And Max has secured the car, put in the car into park, and he can relax. Mate, that's a high five. Well done. So very, good? very good. What was very good was that you put your signal on when you moved over to stop. You had the oncoming traffic that would benefit, mm -hmm. and more importantly, yeah, you had the vehicles. Yeah, there was a car behind me as yes. well. Yes. So this is the main reason why people would fail for not indicating. Clearly, that's not what you did, but just giving the scenario. Okay. So if there was no indication and someone moved over to stop, this vehicle doesn't know, this vehicle doesn't know, because there's no indication, and then we suddenly just slowed down, yeah. plonk our car, pretty much, not in front of them, but it slightly obscures yeah. the road. You know, so this is affects the traffic. And the major point is if we cause any other vehicles to do one of the three S's, which is slow, stop, or swerve. Swerve means steering around us, okay, okay. swerving. This is equals S, which is serious. Okay. So a slow, a stop, or a swerve equals serious fault and you fail your driving test. Okay. So it's really important that people know the reasons why they get a serious fault for one of the other three S's. Okay, cool. Okay. Right, Max, well done. Uh, so we've completed our left turns. Uh, the next part of your syllabus would be right turns. Mm, this Lovely. is where it gets interesting. <laughs> Lovely. So we'll see everybody on the next part of the syllabus where Max will be doing his right turn. See you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs>